Hey guys, I'm going to be recording a little part of my NASA's guide that I didn't actually put in the guide. I talked about runes, but I feel like I could make a tier list and talk in depth about each rune in the game and like if it's good, if it's bad, you know, whether you should ever run it. So yeah, let's jump into this. So press the attack, probably B tier, like you'll get some value out of it. It does make your teammates do more damage sometimes, which is pretty good, but I wouldn't ever recommend running this rune. Uh, it... Actually, let's define the tiers. This is going to be like core. This is going to be like situational. This is going to be meh. This is going to be like actively bad. And then this is unusable. So, yeah, I think PTA is meh. Um, lethal tempo. This is core. I use lethal tempo in a lot of my games. Any matchup where I want to fist fight the enemy, I'm going to take lethal tempo. Uh, yeah, I think I think it's the best keystone for Q Max as well. I think this is core on Nasus. The attack speed, the range, really, really good. Fleet, situational. You'll take this against some poke lanes. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think it's particularly good. Definitely situational. Um, Conqueror. The problem with Conqueror and the reason it's going in Mare is that it's always outclassed by Lethal Tempo. So I don't think I would ever take this. I used to take this where I took Lethal Tempo, but now I just take Lethal Tempo because I've realized that it's better. So uh, yeah. Uh, right, these two runes um, are a little bit interesting. So the rune itself is not bad. Like Overheal's pretty decent. Um, but it's going in actively bad and the reason it's going in actively bad as is Triumph despite these runes being good is that Presence of Mind is core uh, if you ever go Precision you have to take Presence of Mind and so it's actively bad to run these two runes and I think we'll see a lot of cases where that happens now if I was going to rate them independently I'd probably put Triumph I'd probably put them I don't know. I'd probably put them both in Met anyway, but because Presence of Mind exists and you have to choose between them, it makes these two actively bad. Uh, Alacrity. Alacrity is situational. If you don't need Tenacity, which is core, I'll just go out and say it, like, Tenacity is core on Nasus. Uh, if you're ever going Precision Tree, you should be taking Tenacity. If you don't need it, you can take Alacrity, and Alacrity is really good. It's going to have really good synergy with the Lethal Tempo. Bloodline is just actively bad. Uh, I mean, I guess it's meh. It's not that bad. It's not as bad as, like, not taking Presence of Mind. So, I guess it just goes in meh here. But yeah, Alacrity, attack speed's really good. Tenacity, Tenacity's amazing. So, Tenacity is core. Uh, last Stand. Last Stand is core. A lot of the time, your health is going to be bouncing up and down on a champion with sustain. Uh, and then these two, cut down, situational. Every now and again, you're going to be against like a Scion and you're going to get a lot of value out of cut down. But a lot of the time, I'll still take um, last stand because I'm building tanky myself. So cut down's probably meh. And then coup de gras is also meh. I think last stand's just going to outperform it. I think these two are meh just because last stand outperforms them. But it doesn't outperform them to the degree that presence of mind outperforms overheal and triumph. Like presence of mind is damn near necessary. Whereas these two runes, like Tenacity is really nice, sometimes necessary. And then Last Stand is really nice to have, and it just kind of outperforms these two, so they go in meh. Uh, Electrocute. Meh. Like, you can proc it. Proccing it is the same as proccing Phase Rush. It's just bad. It's not as good as any other option. Uh, Predator, also meh. Probably actively bad. Like, when are you ever going to predate against someone? It does literally nothing for you in lane. I don't really know why you would ever use this. Uh, Dark Harvest is just a worse version of Electrocute. Nasus is not the kind of champion that's going to be running around stacking up his Dark Harvest. So it's just actively bad. Now, Hail of Blades, in some matchups, I could see this being okay. So I'm going to put it with Electrocute in meh. Like, it could be okay. Um, right. 
we're getting into the domination tree now. So another thing is that these keystones are hit down into meh. Like let's say electrocute was at the top of the blue, tr the sorcery tree. Maybe we could take electrocute in some matchups, but it's not. It's in the red tree. And as you'll see shortly, these red minor runes are not good. And um, yeah, that's kind of it. Like cheap shot, meh. It'll just add a little bit of extra damage. Uh, Taste of Blood, also meh. It'll heal you a little bit. Sudden Impact is literally unusable. Um, we, we have no way of proccing this rune. Zombie Ward, meh. Ghost Poro. Ghost Poro is like the best of the meh runes like you can get yourself a little bit of early ap with this rune by dropping it and like in the lane and letting them walk into it and maybe in a way that can allow you to skip the dark seal maybe that can hit a breakpoint. i'd have to test it for now i'm going to keep it in meh i mean I i'm not going to test it because i don't ever want to be taking the red tree there are so many better keystones that you can take um or so many better minor runes that you can take sorry so i'm, I'm not going to test that because uh, eyeball collection is just actively bad. It's a snowball rune, which is not what Nasus is good at. Uh, this is... Ravenous Hunter is now Ultimate Hunter. Um, a lot of these have changed, so bear in mind this is Ultimate Hunter. This is not Ravenous Hunter. Oh, wait, no. Oh, Ravenous Hunter became Treasure Hunter. Okay, yeah, yeah that's right. So this is Treasure Hunter. Uh, Treasure Hunter is actively bad. It's basically the same as Eyeball Collection. You're not your top lane, right? You're not going to get all your stacks of it. Uh, Ingenious Hunter, we don't really run any cooldowns until Stoneplate. Uh, I guess it slightly lowers the Trinity Force timer, but that's not, like, it's negligible. Relentless Hunter is pretty meh. Ultimate Hunter is also pretty meh, but I think Ultimate Hunter would probably be the best of the Hunters now that we've got this really low CD ult that we've got. It'd give you, like, really low CD ult. But yeah, these two are meh. These two are actively bad. The red runes in general, not very good. Into the blue tree. Airy is core. We take Airy quite often. Um, it's what we use in any matchup where we want to poke out the enemy. Comet, I think, is situational. It's a high DPS keystone for when you want to be in the blue tree, but um, you don't really need Airy lane pressure. It's, it's like a version of Airy that's worse in lane, but scales better. So sometimes you can take this rune. Uh, I like to take it into champions that are very immobile because the Comet hits them more often, things like Yorick. Um, but if their team is giving me very free scaling, sometimes I might take Comet. Face Rush is core. Like, this is necessary in some matchups, so it goes straight into core. Um, the, now we get Nimbus Cloak and... Um, what's this called? N nullifying Orb? Yeah, Nullifying Orb. Nimbus Cloak and Nullifying Orb suffer from the same problem as Overheal and Triumph, in that they block you from taking Mana Flow Band, which is core. Mana Flow Band enables Emax Nasus to be played. Uh, you need the 250 mana, you need the mana regen. This is absolutely core. Transcendence as well. Haste is incredible on Nasus. Partial CD resets whenever you get a takedown in a team fight. Also very, very good. And because Transcendence is so core, it makes these two actively bad. Celerity just gives you a tiny bit of move speed. Doesn't really help you. Absolute Focus gives you AP when you're high health, but you are the tank. This is not really going to do anything. Uh, Scorch is core. We're pretty much always going to take this. Water walking is actively bad. We're not roaming that much. We're not running up and down the river. It denies us from having Scorch. And then Gathering Storm is situational. If Scorch does literally nothing but you need Phase Rush, you can take Gathering Storm. Outside of that, I wouldn't ever take it, but that is the situation to take Gathering Storm. It's like, this is a matchup where I need Phase Rush, for example, Aatrox, but Scorch doesn't really help me in the lane, for example, Aatrox, so I'm going to take Gathering Storm. And even then, you can still take Scorch, because if he fucks up, the Scorch can help you kill him, but yeah. Uh, Grasp. Grasp is okay. I'm going to put it in situational. Like, Grasp is pretty good. In some matchups, you can farm a lot of health and become very tanky. I think Grasp is really good if you're going for the Jack Show build. Um, so yeah, Grasp really good there. Aftershock is literally unusable. We cannot proc it. Guardian is unusable because, like, we're top lane. We can't proc it on anyone. Uh, Demolish. Demolish is situational. You can use it when you're pushing. You can get some plates with this. Like, Demolish is good when, when you can proc it, but it requires you it essentially requires you to be taking uh, grasp or 
you're skipping out on a much better rune, which we'll show later. Uh, Font of Life is meh. Like this, this rune, it used to be situational when it could proc Echoes of Helia, because that was like a situational build. Now it's just meh. Field Bash we literally can't proc. It's outside of Stone Plate, but I'm putting it in unusable because of that. Uh, conditioning is situational. Conditioning is what you run if for some reason you don't need either of the next two runes, which we're going to talk about. Uh, so second wind, this helps you sustain in lanes where you're going to get like regularly poked out. And bone plating, this gives you windows where you can avoid big trades. And a lot of the time bone plating we use to reset waves and stuff. These are both core runes. We're going to be picking one of them. 90% of games we're going to be picking one of them. Overgrowth. This is situational. We take overgrowth when we don't need another core rune, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, revitalize. This rune is actively bad. We don't really need more healing. Heal and shield power isn't good for us because uh, we don't heal anyone else. And it's actively bad because it denies us from unflinching. Amazing rune. Essentially the same as Legend Tenacity, but it also grants slow resist as well as tenacity. It's one of the best runes in the entire game on Nasus, a champion with no mobility. Uh, slow resist is amazing on this champion, so yeah. Glacial Augment, we can't proc it. Unsealed Spellbook, I'm going to put it in situational. Uh, the rune is pretty good, it's hard to use. You could pick this at times where you might take Comet. Um, you need a really easy lane to be able to play this rune, but like you can get a lot of value out of it, especially in team fights if you can keep using different uh, summoner spells in team fights. Omni Stone is now first strike. I'm gonna put it in situational. Um, sometimes it's good. You can farm some gold with it. There are lanes where your goal is just to ignore the enemy laner, like Aatrox or Garen. Unfortunately, Aatrox is so hard that you need like the mana flow and the resolve tree. But if you ever don't need the resolve tree, you can take, uh, and you need the phase rush as well against Aatrox. But like Garen, you don't need the phase rush. Uh, you could take. First strike with biscuits for your mana instead of mana flow band, and then you could go resolve second, um, and you can farm up some gold with first strike and just scale a little bit better. It's definitely situational, not many matchups where you can run it, and even if you can, I often don't, but the option's there. Uh, Hex Flash, this is just actively bad. In fact, it's going to be unusable because we run Ghost. Um, free boots, situational. It's good when you have first strike or spellbook, but only sometimes because a lot of the time we want to get an early CDR boots. So I'm going to put it in meh actually because we want the early CDR boots and this really kind of screws with that. But once it's online, it's really good. The bonus 10 move speed is amazing for Nasus, but you do have to get there and we want our boots early. Boots help us space in a lot of matchups. So yeah. Perfect timing. This is situational. Um, a lot of the time we're going to be taking this when we're in the... Um, what tree is this called? The Inspiration Tree. It just gives you a free stopwatch, which is better than Boots. Uh, it's situational because you're only going to be taking it with Spellbook or with um, First Strike. But yeah, it just gives you a free stopwatch at, at some point in the game. Pretty good. Uh, Futures Market, also situational. We're once again going to be taking this when we're in the uh, Inspiration Tree, but we need to be in the Inspiration Tree, but not need mana. So maybe we're going for a Leandri's build, in which case we can use this to hit the um, the Lost Chapter earlier. Then it's really good. Uh, but yeah, you see how it's situational? Like You, you definitely need a plan on how you're going to use Futures Market. It's things like I'm going to hit this lost chapter spike now, or I'm going to base with it and get Sheen now, or you know, these sort of things. Minion Dematerializer. This is meh. Like, one thing we can use it for is to avoid needing the Dark Seal in lane. It will give us the breakpoint on our E to clear the waves anyway. But the Dark Seal is kind of good anyway. Like, it's just a cost effective item that scales with how many takedowns you get. You don't die a lot on Nasus. Like, he's a really safe champion. So, yeah, it, it's meh. Biscuits are situational. They're basically a replacement for Mana Flow Band um, in lanes where you have Inspiration. Next we have Cosmic Insight. This is also situational, mainly because of the tree that it's in. Uh, Cosmic Insight is really good when you can have it. 
Um, but yeah, it lowers the cooldown of your summoner spells, which having more ghost, more access to ghost is really good. Now this one, this one is situational, but like, it like I think this is the best situational rune in the game. Um, like it's better than fleet, better than alacrity, comet. Yeah, this is the best situational rune in the game. So I might even put this into core. I'm gonna put it at the bottom of core just to like define it as the best situational rune in the game. When you need to get to someone, approach velocity is amazing. I run this against Kale. I run this against Karma. You know these sort of things. Uh, if I didn't want Airy and Second Wind against Kennen, I might consider running it against Kennen as well. It's really good in range matchups. It just lets you get to them. It gives you 15% move speed towards withered targets. It's absolutely crazy. Time Warp Tonic is bad. You don't want this. Uh, and now finally, we've got the little stat shards. So the adaptive shard is core. We're going to be running this pretty much every single time on the second row. The attack speed shard is actively bad. We don't need more attack speed. We need this for the ease in lane. Haste shard is core. This is incredible. And then I feel like all these shards, like health is situational. Armor is situational. Magic resist is situational. Kind of speaks for itself. The health shard outscales the armor and magic resist shards as, uh, as you go into the game, like level eight or so. The health shard will be better and it will scale better into the game. But... Generally, you're going to need armor or magic resist in lane, and then obviously they're situational based on which one you need. So that is all the runes. Um, and yeah, a little bit about what I think of each of them and why I would or wouldn't take them. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.